matches below. Hey guys, Max Bloom here, bringing you guys the TV show review. Today we're going to be talking about the DC's Legends of Tomorrow on the CW Network. Um, so, I don't really have any strong opinion on whether I like it or don't like it. Uh, I just think the show was pretty good, and overall, this season was just okay. Now, I was like every other DC fan out there, super excited when the show got announced. I remember uh, towards the end of last year, or actually the year before that maybe, uh, but at the end of season 3 and season 1 of Flash and Arrow, um, when there was that kind of like upfront like video of all these heroes together and they were going to become a team, I was super excited, super pumped, um, and I just remember this is going to be the greatest thing in the world, right? Um, so I was really hyped. Uh, I remember when the show was coming on and they kind of made this big like DC week out of them all where it's like here is the mid-season return of Flash, here's the mid-season return of Arrow, and here's the season premiere of Legends Tomorrow. Super pumped, excited, and I think it really got off at a really good start. I think uh, the general premise was there, and they had a good villain, and they were a good team of characters, but I think along the way, the story kind of struggled, uh, stained, uh, kind of focused on the goal, and I think ultimately uh, the villain wasn't as powerful as I kind of hoped he would have been. So the main idea between the whole season of Legends of Tomorrow um, is that there is a guy called Rip Hunter and he is from the future but he is a time master that basically he works with this organization that kind of makes sure everything is fine throughout time. There's no kind of time manipulation and whatnot. Then there is this character called Vandal Savage, who he is immortal and is constantly living a long time. And eventually he gains power and Rip Hunter thinks that the Time Masters should get involved so this doesn't happen. They deny it so he kind of goes rogue and he makes a band of heroes and villains, you know, a, a, a ragtag team to kind of help him stop Vandal Savage. Uh, that's pretty much the premise of it. I don't want to really want to spoil it for you guys because if any of you guys are interested, you know, you, you should definitely go watch the show, especially if you're already watching one of the other DC TV shows. Um, I'm sure Netflix will eventually pick up the season, so if you guys want to binge that whole season, uh, you know, you guys should definitely do it. But, <clears throat> so here's some of my gripes. Uh, first off is Vandal Savage. I think Vandal Savage was the perfect character to use in this format. Uh, right off the bat, he is immortal, so it gives you this, you know, it gives you a reason why Vandal Savage could be in the 1950s, in the 1960s, and in, like, the year 2100, right? It, like, it, it's already simple that even a non-comic book fan would understand, so I think the villain they got right. What I think they got wrong is that they never really show Vandal have uh, this overwhelming power that if the legends come in and stop him, he could take over the world then and there. Um, you know, they did start off the show like that, that there is a point in time where he does take control of everything, but then throughout the whole season when they go through these different time periods, he's pretty much just a, a, a kind of a nuisance, right? He's somebody who is causing trouble, but it never felt like this is, you know, uh, world changing trouble and I think that was kind of the failure on kind of the Vandal Savage character I think because he is a guy who is constantly in time and he'll like technically you'll never beat him because you can't kill him you can't stop him he'll just come back I think they really should have built up this really powerful type of character that even though he's going up against the Atom or going up against Firestorm um, they're always somewhat scared of what he can do because essentially since he can die, he has nothing to lose, right? And so I never really felt that type of kind of impact with Vandal Savage. And so I'm a little disappointed in that. I think the actor was really good at it. I think he really nailed uh, kind of what Vandal Savage should be portrayed in live action. But I just think they never gave him the opportunity to really, you know, escalate and take over. Uh, we always see him, he's about, he's doing something that's going to eventually get him power. And then we see him already have power, but this is where the, the team intervenes. We never really see that, like, 
him his dominance we never really see him really have full control of everything and and essentially become the ultimate tyrant and so i'm a little disappointed in that um the legends team i think they were fine i think you know you you did essentially get the best characters from the other tv shows i really like how they kind of brought in the villains and kind of kind of almost give them a redemption and made them into heroes i really think they they did that quite nicely um but you know it <clears throat> right off the bat you're going to compare this to let's say a justice league right it is a team of superheroes so you're going to compare it to another team of superheroes and i never really felt this team was a team i felt there was too many episodes where it was kind of like a secret ops missions where rip hunter would select certain people to go and i think that's perfectly fine and it's actually smart because you know you want to get the best out of your team but i never felt there was this one really cohesive uh, moment where you know you see the whole legends work together and really just nail it and they're you know and they are a team i never really felt that i felt there was too much conflict too much struggle throughout the whole show and i get that is probably one of the why they never got together and they wanted it that way but i just think eventually somewhere during the season they really should have just all unified and be like hey you know what we are legends of tomorrow we are not a hero we are not a villain we are legends so let's work like legends so i'm a little disappointed in that sense um, one, uh, another gripe I have is kind of, um, man, how do you say this? It, it, like the locations they film, right? The Way Rider is a really cool setting and I love it. I think it's really cool. Um, you know, there, there is a cliffhanger. So hopefully in season two, the Way Rider does come back because I think it's a really cool setting, but I think they misuse the Way Rider in certain scenes. Um, there's a lot of scenes where you see, uh, Kendra and Sarah, they're kind of sparring. But where they would be sparring wouldn't make sense. They'd be sparring in the hallway. They'd be sparring in the loading docks. They'd be sparring in kind of like the, the prison cell area. And it just, you know, logically it wouldn't make sense. Why would you be sparring in those areas if there's something that you can break? Or, you know, people could be passing in and through. Or, you know, like there were certain stuff that I was like, why are you filming this scene in this area? It just didn't make sense. There was a scene where Kendra was kind of feeling lost and feeling, you know, like just struggling with some emotions she has towards the atom and she wants to be alone, but she's in the engine room. And so it's stuff like that where I'm just like, why would you be in the engine room? Like, it just does not make sense. So I really hope in future seasons, they can kind of be a little more cautious and be a little more aware of the scene they're trying to film and the area they're trying to film. Uh, they did fix this eventually because eventually they do have uh, the area that's kind of like the bedroom area. And it is just the same kind of setting, but because they film it at different angles and different people at different times, it does make it seem like the Waverider is that much bigger and there are more rooms, kind of like more bedrooms for every person. So that is interesting. It's, I think they, they succeeded in that. And also, towards the beginning, I was like, where's your cafeteria? Where do these guys eat? Eventually, they do show it. But it is more just of a countertop and kind of this little bar of candy. So they are fixing it. They, they try to fix it throughout the season. But I really hope for season two, they kind of, they're just a little more cautious of where these scenes are going to take place. You know, just logically speaking, be like, this doesn't make sense to take to film this scene in this area. You know, I really hope maybe in season two, they can just have an open area that they can double for like, this is the open area. So this is, we'll use the training room and then we'll just bring in some beds. This is the bedroom. And then... We'll take out the beds and put a, a table and a refrigerator. This is, a, you know, like, like I'm not saying throw more money in this. I know you guys have limited budget because it's TV and you have to do special effects and the actors and all that. But I'm just hoping be a little wiser with how you're gonna film the scenes if you're gonna film so many scenes in the Wave Rider. Um, any other gripes? Uh, I guess the last gripe will kind of be the coherency between the story itself and kind of the uh, the other shows. I think, you know towards the, the tail end of this season, uh, especially in the season finale, they did really showcase how the rest of the season and how the rest of the time periods were Vandal Savage in kind of ties in with one another. So I really like that. But the really downfall of it all was that whenever uh, they were showing that like, oh, this period Vandal Savage and this period Vandal Savage, they're connected. Anything else that happened outside of those periods pretty much means it's pointless. And so I kind of feel that uh, even though The Legend of Tomorrow Season 1 started at, uh, at a really good, uh, had a really good start, 
I think along the way, there was too many times where they went to the future to show us future Star City, or they went to the past, uh, you know, and showed us Jonah Hex. I think those were all really cool moments, but they didn't really help uh, propel the story to continue forward, right? I think there's just, like, I really rather had it be more concise and more condensed and really focus on the story of, of Vandal Savage and, Le and Legends. I know there's that sub-story of how the Time Masters are hunting down the Legends, but I really hope that maybe instead of going to a different period, take a place in the same period and really continue these stories. I think instead of having individual episodes, a lot of these episodes, or, or pretty much all the episodes, should have been two-parters to really give it more time to build off, this is what's happening in this time period. I really think that when they get to the point where Vandal Savage already takes over, that should have been more of a three-part episode because, you know, that is pretty much the reason why Rip Hunter went went through the trouble to get this team and it's ultimately the reason why these people are going to help Rip Hunter. And so I really think you should have really stretched out that, that like, uh, that area of time so that we really see the struggle between Vandal Savage and the rest of the world. Um, they, 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 they did still nail it, they did do a good job, but I just feel like you should have spent more time and more emphasis and focus on that time period and certain time periods throughout the, 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 the season that are ultimately going to uh, impact the ending, right? So that's my kind of gripe. The other gripe I have that I said it was coherency between the other shows. Um, I think this show kind of stumbled a lot with what's happening on Arrow. Uh, Sarah Lance, you know, in Legends, she kept saying how she's kind of an avid killer and she has this thing called a bloodlust. But on Arrow, uh, when Constantine came over to uh, rest, uh, re, I don't know how you call it, um, just to bring back Sarah from the dead, he already said that because of his magic, he took away her bloodlust. And then, um, you know, later on in the season, Malcolm Merlin also reiterated that how. Constantine took away Sarah's bloodlust. Yeah, the legends they kept saying that Sarah had a bloodlust. So I'm kind of hoping, you know, future seasons you'd be a little more coherent between all your shows. Fully understand that not everybody's going to watch all the DC TV shows, but for the people that are, you know, kind of have that benefit or, or at least that, that nice bonus that, hey, everything makes sense if you are going to watch it, you know, if, if Flash is on Tuesday and then Wednesday and then, you know, Thursday, you're going to watch it day by day. At least kind of have that nice coherency between them all. Um, you know, those are all, my, all all my gripes on the show. Uh, you know, I didn't hate the show. I really liked it. I think uh, there's, like I said, there were a lot of cool moments. Uh, one thing that's really sticking out to my mind right now is the fact that we finally got transmutation with, uh, with Firestorm. You know, it was a really quick thing. I was kind of hoping it would happen earlier in the season and we could have seen him uh, use it more often. But the fact that they kind of went that extra step to say, hey, he has more superpowers, that's really cool. Um, I think kind of uh, the dynamic between, you know, all these different characters, right? Captain Cold with Sarah Lance, the Adam was Heatwave. Like all these these interesting kind of uh, team-ups were really cool and really see. Talking about Heatwave, uh, he was flat out the best thing of the show. He was the funniest character just because he said all these... Uh, I don't even know if they were intentionally funny, but he just had all these lines that you you just laughed at. And I also think he's the one character that showed a lot of character uh, growth. If you kind of see him from Flash, he was really just essentially a meathead who liked to burn stuff. But then in this season, you see him grow and, and, and you know, not only relate to the Legends, but actually care for them. He does, you know, he becomes smarter in, in certain ways because he... You know, and again, I don't want to step too much into it because I don't want to spoil the season for you, but I really think uh, out of all the characters, I think all of them do show some growth in, in one way or another, but I think uh, the Heat Wave was really the one character that if you see him from the very first time he showed up in Flash to the ending of Legends, he's a completely different character. Um, and, and you know, yeah, those, those are essentially some of my goods and, and my bads. Um, you know, I know I said a lot of bads, but just because those are my mindsets right now. Like I said, I really did like the season. Um, I, I think it was really good. I just think they need to be a little more focused. You know, if you're going to have 13 episodes compared to the 22 episodes of, like, Arrow, you know, you don't have that much time to spend and say, oh, this is a really cool thing, and check this out. Like, stay a little more focused on the story, and I think that would just benefit it all. But overall, I really liked it. I really liked the cliffhanger. I was super excited. I was like, I can't believe this is happening. Um, you know, so 
as far as excitement, I, I'm still excited for Legend of Tomorrow. Super excited for what the, what we're going to see in the future. Um, you know, I just really hope that this is the best way to put it. It's a good start. It's not the best, and it's not awful. It's a good start, and I think there's a lot of potential to make it better. And I think how they nailed it from the beginning, there's no way they can make it uh, worse, you know? Or at least we're hoping there's no way to make it worse. Uh, but yeah, those are kind of my thoughts on, on the show. Like I said, if you guys manage to get it on, you know, DVD or it's going to be on Netflix, whatever, I really suggest you guys go watch it. It's like 13 episodes, so it's not a big series. Um, but I think it's really good and really fun. So those are kind of my thoughts on Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, you know, comment down below with your guys' thoughts and opinions. Tell me guys if you liked the season, if you guys didn't like it. Um, like the video, you guys like it, dislike it if you didn't. And subscribe and look forward to more videos. Thanks. Laters.